An MIT professor is on paid administrative leave following a review into donations the school received from convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. According to Goodwin Proctor, the law firm that conducted the investigation, Professor Seth Lloyd knew donations from the late financier would be controversial and that MIT might have rejected them. Last year, MIT's Media Lab director, Joy Ito, resigned after a New Yorker report alleged he accepted millions of dollars worth in donations from Epstein. So Phoenix Salmon has been following this story and joins us now with more. He's a chief financial correspondent for Axios. Thank you so much Good for joining be. us. Thank you. So I think Many people would have heard about the other professor, right, uh, jo Joey, Joey yeah. and that he was forced to resign. But I don't think they know about this other sort of part to the story. Right. So explain to us the relationship that Seth Lloyd had with Epstein. So Seth, Epstein collected scientists, mm. basically. He um, was very close to Harvard. He funded a lot of science at Harvard. Um, after he was convicted of his sex crimes, Harvard distanced him distanced themselves from him. And so he wound up sort of moving across Cambridge to MIT and funding a bunch of often Harvard scientists through MIT. They were like co-located mm. scientists and that kind of thing. Seth Lloyd was one of the um, his pet scientists who he liked to fund. He gave him $60,000 just personally into his personal bank account. And, um, and then he would also cultivate Joey Ito, who was running the Media Lab, which is this very sort of corporate arm of MIT, um, promised him millions of dollars, and according to The New Yorker, managed to get $7 million into the MIT Media Lab via both Bill Gates, uh, who we know, and Leon Black, who runs this big private equity company. Uh -huh. Both of them are billionaires. And so there's this massive influence of Jeffrey Epstein throughout large chunks of Boston, basically. So were there any policies that the school had in place where this, this professor may have violated some of those policies by accepting this money? It's an incredibly good question. The, um, the report basically says no, there weren't any policies. They did make up a few policies on the fly. They decided <laughs> that they could take, quote unquote, small donations from Jeffrey Epstein, which was anything less than like a million dollars. That's small? That's small, yeah. Um, <laughs> just so long as they were anonymous and Jeffrey Epstein didn't take public credit for them. But then Epstein would give these donations and take public credit for them anyway, mm. and they didn't know what to do. And then eventually they just went through the, the Leon Black route or the Bill Gates so route instead. Is this is this the Joey Ito's loophole? Is this what he sort of created? Exactly. Okay, so explain more about this. I think people need to know, they knew full well that they were accepting money from a convicted sex offender. Mm. They knew that, you know, perhaps the other other people associated with the school would be very upset if they right. found out about and it. And there were people in the school who were going up to Joey Ito and saying, I am very upset about this. Right. He is a convicted sex offender. We should not be accepting money from him. And the response to that was, well, when Epstein comes to visit us, let's make sure that they don't see him. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So what okay, are these loopholes? Yeah, talk about that. So the, ma the main loophole that Joey Ito discussed with one of the um, development officers at MIT was what if there was, what if instead of accepting money from Epstein directly, Epstein gave money to some billionaire's favorite charity, and in return, that billionaire gave the same amount of money to MIT. Right. It's like a shell like sort a, of deal yeah. or something it's, like it's that. You, you, yeah. you, you cross, like you cross the money, you, Yeah, you wash the money, and so it looks you like the donation money. is coming from a clean billionaire mm -hmm. rather than from a sex offender. And by all accounts within MIT, this is what everyone in MIT believed had happened with both the Bill Gates donation and the Leon Black donation. And it seems to have worked. With this Goodwin Proctor report, they found nothing wrong with those donations. So did we hear from uh, Bill Gates or? Leon Black? Yeah. Leon Black is saying nothing to anyone. He refused to talk to Goodwin Proctor. Um, Bill Gates has denied that his donation had anything to do with Epstein, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fall under the rubric of any other Bill Gates donations. It just doesn't behave like them. It's a $2 million donation with no strings attached. Mm -hmm. With He's not even saying what he's funding or why he's funding it. From his personal account rather than from his foundation, it's very odd. Doesn't, sm doesn't pass the smell test, as mm. they say. Right, and so now MIT is putting together what it calls a, quote, clear and comprehensive gift policy and vetting process for donors. But if these allegations like those relating to these donations are true in the name of Bill Gates, Leon Black, how effective would those policies be anyway? If you are sending money to somebody who's clean, 
to then uh, provide those funds to the university, exactly. then the, it doesn't it, really work. It lo it, it's, it's a policy for the sake of having a policy, but we live in a world where these things, I don't know if you've heard of them, called donor-advised funds. You can just put all of your money into a donor-advised fund, which is officially a charity, and then use the money from the donor-advised fund to give anonymously. It, your name isn't on it, but all you need to do is phone up the dean, like mm -hmm. someone like Joey Ito, and say, hey, you know, a million dollars is coming tomorrow, and a million dollars comes tomorrow, and he knows that it's you, so it's not really anonymous. Can we talk a little bit about what Jeffrey Epstein got out of these relationships? Because yes, he sort of, you know, sold himself as the, the financier to only billionaires, but then he has this other, you, I mean, you described one of the scientists as a pet. He has these other sort of pet projects, and they're specifically um, Ivy League scientists that he likes to hobnob with, that he, ta with Ido, that he took on flights with him, that, it's like a veneer he of respectability. He gets something from this association. He, hangs, right? he, he, he invites these people to his private island, like, uh, like Larry Summers yeah. is a bit good friend of his. He flies out to Silicon Valley, has dinner with Reid Hoffman, who, who founded LinkedIn. Duke mm -hmm. of York. Oh, and of course, you know, <laughs> right. a lot of very close relationships with Prince Andrew. And, and this like gives him the feeling of power and influence that that he craved, right. that he wasn't some, you know, social outcast sex offender. He was hanging out with the most rich and powerful people in the world. Right, of course. And, uh, you know, you imagine, uh, like you said, he's not a sort of a former sex offender. Um, and you think to yourself, well, if these people are hanging out with him, then it must not be that wrong. bad. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Fascinating reporting. Felix Salmon, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Appreciate you. It.